This year I was so excited I got a brand new video game for Christmas. Uh, it's too bad it's January 1st and I've decided to give up video games to spend more time in the shop. Oh well, let's get to work. This is a really simple project, but it's a great way to start off the new year. I'm making a locking nut and handle for my quick change tool post on my 10 by 18 lathe. I'm constantly reaching for a wrench and I misplace it or my son comes and takes it away on me and I can't find it. I started the project by drawing it up in Autodesk's Fusion. Uh, this is a awesome piece of software and if you're looking for CAD for the home shop or even for a small commercial shop it's really really good uh, I'm a, previously I'm a diehard SolidWorks fan but I'm amazed at what Fusion brings to the table I decided to draw this up because going forward I hope to have drawings for all the projects that I do uh, sometimes it seems a little bit trivial to make a drawing for something so simple but I think it helps me think through the project even if it's a simple one and hopefully it benefits some of you if you're considering a project like this and it gives you a starting point or a place to go off of. So I drew the nut and handle up as like a single um, body and then split them up in Fusion. Uh, I can do Fusion tutorials down the road uh, if you're interested uh, just leave something in the comments or get in touch with me and we'll uh, we'll go from there. I thought we'd take a few moments and talk a little bit about taps. Uh, no, not the plumbing fixtures, the things we use in the shop. I think we as home machinists all go out and make the purchase of one of these at some point. Uh, these are these sets. Uh, this one is made by Mastercraft. You can tell I'm a Canuck. Uh, that's a Canadian brand. Essentially, it's a Chinese tap and die set. And it's really, really cheap. Like, I think this thing was like under $50 for a full set of, you know, standard taps and dies. Uh, but you'll soon find out that they're essentially barely adequate for cutting threads in things like you know brass and aluminum you might get by in a free cutting steel with them they're terrible in anything else uh, and the reason for that is usually these taps and dies sets are made out of a high carbon steel essentially they're just a hardened tool steel and they do that because they're cheap but of course it's quite tempting because when you open them up you get like ooh, I even have the instructions that's strange you get all these sets right like you get you know you get all your metric uh, coarse and fine pitches you get your imperial and then you have your pipe they'll have a couple pipe um, taps in there too and then you get all the dies and then you get the wonderful holders and you know it, it's quite tempting to go out and buy these and i would say like if you're just like chasing threads and stuff some of them can be not too bad uh if you look closely at the the dies you'll notice that often many times if i can get one of these out um they're never split you know they've got the the line in them to make them to make them look like they're kind of legitimate dies but essentially these are, are thread chasing um, tools to, you know, remove rust and, you know, something a typical, you know, average repair type person would be doing with a set like this. When you're starting to cut um, steel or you're starting to do, you know, some work in the shop, the performance of these are going to let you down. Uh, I've, I've used them for projects when I don't have the size. I don't want to run out and get another tap. 
Uh, they work not too badly in a pinch. I wouldn't want to rely on them. And I know that if I had a critical project, they're going to break. And then I'm going to spend the rest of the evening chiseling out a tap and or making a new piece. So yeah, I guess they're handy to have around. Maybe have a set in your shop, but you know, don't really depend on them for really good performance. So here we have a standard hand tap. Uh, I took it out of my Chinese set. Uh, this is a this is a plug tap. Uh, there generally are two types of hand taps. There's a hand plug tap and a hand bottoming tap. You know, a plug tap is a tap that has about four times the pitch for a lead or about four threads where the thread tapers to a full thread and you can kind of see that in the video there you know this is the start of the tap obviously and then by the time you get to about the fourth thre uh, thread it becomes full and then the threads in between it, it tapers in that's you know a plug tap a bottoming tap will only have one to two threads where there's a taper and uh, then the full thread will start uh, you know, these types of taps, a plug tap is generally used for through hole uh, because there's a larger taper on it. Um, the idea is that it puts less load on the tap, uh, especially um, when you're, you know, starting and it's a bit easier to start because there's a taper there. Uh, a bottoming tap, you know, generally used for blind holes when you want the thread to get as close to the bottom of the hole as possible. When I purchase taps anymore, I purchase one type of tap. And it's a it's a machine tap. It's not considered a hand tap. And I purchased a spiral flute bottoming tap. So there you can see is a a traditional hand tap that's just out of my Chinese set. And these are the types of uh, taps that I pretty much use exclusively in the shop if I can get them. And I buy um, these types of taps as I go. They're usually around. For me, $10 a piece, that's Canadian, you know, Northern Peso. So in the US, it's probably quite a bit less. My favorite brand of tap uh, for value is YG. I use them a lot in a production setting, but you know, the price is, is good enough on them that you can use them in the home shop. And if you buy them as you go and you kind of standardize your projects on a few sizes, unless obviously you're doing work that requires something different, but you know, the cost isn't that bad. Now you can tell that this tap looks quite a bit different. Uh, this tap here, the spiral flute bottoming tap, it's designed specifically for, for uh, threading, you know, blind holes. It's, it's spiraled to push the chip, you know, out of the tap as it, as opposed to in the hole. And, and I'll show you a different uh, machine tap that, that's called a spiral uh, point. It's kind of confusing. I know spiral flute and spiral point. Um, it's sort of kind of like the, it looks more like the, the hand tap, although it, it does look different as well, but it, it more looks like this, but this one has a, has a kind of a corkscrew of flute like a drill does. And when you uh, tap with it, you can actually see the chip kind of run up the flute. It's uh, really quite neat to watch. Uh, now these two taps are the same pitch. This is a, an M, I think it's an M10 by, uh, M10 by 1.5. Um, as you can see, well, maybe I'll try to get the camera a little bit closer there. So there's a, a more close up shot of of these taps if you haven't seen them before. Um, you can see that the actual thread form is, is on, on the spiral and um, this is a, is a three flute. Uh, most of them are three fluted, which kind of makes it hard to measure. Uh, it's difficult to measure, but you know, in the home shop, usually I just trust the tooling that's coming in, especially if it's from a reputable supplier. And uh, you can see that this is essentially a bottoming tap. I think they say it's about uh, 2p or two times the, the pitch, which I've found is, is quite close to what, what they are. So even though the thread form on the, the spiral flute 
bottoming tap is quite a bit shorter. It's only about from here to here. Whereas the hand tap is this full length. They will tap about the same uh, length of hole. This, this tap will actually tap all the way to here. I've standardized on this type of tap. Doesn't matter if I'm doing blind holes or if I'm doing through holes, unless I have a job that has high volume in, in the shop where I can justify purchasing sort of the proper tool for the job. But to have good high quality taps around, this is by far um, the best tap in my opinion to go with. Uh, it works well in you know, through holes. It's probably one of the best for blind holes. YG rates it f up to a rock hole of about um, you know, an RC 28, which is, you know, fairly hard. Uh, you know, that, I guess that's still quite soft, but you know, it's, it's not like super soft. Uh, if you need to tap harder material, you can get, you know, these taps rated in, you know, for harder material, but yeah, I, I, for blind holes, for through holes, they work really good. I have really, really good, um, success with them. And for the price, uh, and the performance, they're um, really good. And it also helps you sort of, you know, keep your your budget down. So even though you're not supposed to use them for through holes, you're supposed to use a spiral point tap, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but they do a, a decent job and they work like a million times better than, you know, these types of taps. So this tap in the front here is a spiral point tap. This is a plug tap or you know, a tapered tap um, designed specifically for tapping, you know, through holes. It, as you can see, it kind of looks more like the hand tap. Um, this is a, a three fluted tap. I'll get a close up of that again as well. So as you can see, it's, it's a three fluted tap. Uh, they, they put this angle on here on the thread. That's how it looks different than a traditional hand tap. So like the thread form is actually tapered there. And then this one, the lead is about four times the picture for, for, you know, partial threads. And then on, on the, it's got like a sharp point, you know, I guess that's why they call it a spiral point tap, but you know, spirals kind of confusing because, you know, they call the other one a spiral flute. So again, this is a YG brand. You know, like I said, one of my favorites for the price. You know, this one again is about ten dollars. I purchased this because I had a bunch of through holes I had to tap for somebody. Uh, it does, you know, start a lot easier. So if you're um, tapping with it, it is a little less finicky to start than you know a bottoming tap. Uh, the performance on these is really good. Like we. Uh, I've tapped, you know, well over, you know, a thousand holes with, with one tap, you know, obviously you're using appropriate, um, you know, coolant or, you know, like a thread cutting oil with it, but it, you know, it does a really, really good job. And I've had really, really good success with the, the YG product. You know, YG is a, is a Korean company. It, but the, the quality on on them has been really, really good, especially when you consider the price. So here's the three taps that you'll find in my shop. There's the, the standard hand tap. This happens to be a plug tap. That's out of my, you know, import high carbon steel set. I actually don't own any hand bottoming taps. Then you have the spiral flute bottoming tap, which by far is my go-to tap when I'm purchasing taps to have. And then there's the spiral point tap, which I use only if there's really a bunch of holes that I have to tap in, in through holes that justify me purchasing a separate tap for it. So I use these primarily for blind holes and through holes. And I use these if I have a really big job to do for through holes. And I only use these if I have to, like it's late at night and my tooling supplier isn't open or I just don't feel like 
going to pick up a tap. Although that's probably a little foolish because I'll at some point end up picking this tap out of a job that it's stuck in. The rest of the video is a build of the nut and the handle. I'll try to point out some interesting things as we go. Here I set the tool over on an angle as opposed to 90 degrees with the surface to get a, a rubbing action going. Uh, you can get mirror-like finishes when you set the tool over like that. Set the spindle speed uh, really slow and set the feed really slow as well. Uh, you can see it in this picture here. Um, that is a really, really good surface finish. Watch the chip form on this spiral flute bottoming tab. Here's where I indexed the nut on the lathe. And I spent way too much time trying to get it perfectly flat.
Now on to making the handle. Here I'm just putting in some relief into the thread so that it can thread all the way down into the nut. I just ground my other side of the part off tool with a 45 degree angle. Yeah, that's not a perfect radius. I used a half inch end mill for this job, which was way too big, but it was the first thing I grabbed out of the toolbox. See, see, I'm not a Luddite. There's actually a calculator in the shop. I was quite happy with how it turned out. It's going to save me a lot of time when I position the tool post, which I do actually quite frequently. Thanks for watching, everybody.